TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Today you join me in beautiful San Diego to take a look at the all new second generation Kia Nero. And this is a car that we have actually had a chance to check out before, but only fairly briefly. And on this trip, we actually get to drive it and get it out on the road. And that video is going to be coming very soon. But before we get it out on the road, we want to walk around the car and show you everything there is to see on it because there's a lot to pick apart here. Now this new Kia Nero is going to be available with three different powertrains. This base model is a hybrid, then you can opt for a plug-in hybrid, or you can even go for the all-electric model. And as you go down that list, they get more powerful, you get more for the money. But with this base hybrid version, you get a 1.6 liter inline four-cylinder gas engine paired to a six-speed dual-clutch transmission and you get a 32 kilowatt electric motor. Combined output, 139 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque. And let's go ahead and hop on the inside and check out what kind of interior you get with that because these segments are becoming very, very competitive. And so to stay competitive, all of the manufacturers are having to throw in tons of tech and tons of features. Now you can see I have a really nice array of screens and a generally very nice interior. One thing that I think is pretty cool is that on these cars, Kia is making the interiors in such a way that it doesn't hurt our friendly animals. So this headliner is apparently made partly from recycled wallpaper. Parts of the materials used on the seats come from eucalyptus leaves and they have BTX free paint on the door cards, which just creates less waste, less environmental impact. So kind of cool that they're making these small electrified cars a little bit better for the environment. You might as well. Um, all around on the interior, I mean, the materials feel pretty good. You know, it definitely feels a little different than your usual, but it doesn't feel bad. And the layout of the interior looks really nice. I love the fact that they have a legit shifter. It's not a rotary dial. It's not a push button. This is the kind of shifter that we prefer. Uh, one thing that I'm not huge on are these screens for the climate. I remember when we got the EV6 at our office, I went on the program for the EV6 um, and I had to show my coworkers who are, you know, Kind of old school had to show them how to use this setup to get to your climate i mean once you're used to it it's really not the end of the world um, they couldn't figure out where the tune knob was and i told them that you had to switch it away from climate in order to turn what would otherwise be the passenger side temp control uh, into your tune knob because they were complaining that it didn't have a tune knob it does uh, they were also complaining that it didn't have a good way for you to adjust the volume without having to spam this rocker switch on the steering wheel. It does, you just have to change the screen layout to do it. So it's a usable interior once you get used to it. If you're maybe a slightly older driver, it might take you a moment to get used to. Um, this is also kind of cool. You can leave your storage area down here a little bit more open if you have larger items to store, or you can turn them into cup holders. It's a small thing, but it's kind of a fun way to make the most use out of your space that you possibly can. Um, let's hop in, there it is. Let's hop in the rear seat and see how we fit because this is a fairly small car. It's not, tiny and actually the Nero is now bigger than the car the Nero that it replaces um, overall in terms of being able to fit in here I mean I'm only five foot ten I'm not a huge guy but I have plenty of leg room plenty of head headroom and it feels pretty spacious back here I also do really like that they've got vents here for the rear seat passengers that is really nice to have summer and winter being able to have climate for your rear seat passengers huge plus. You also have USB-C's right back here, not USB-A's, which is great because most things are moving to USB-C's. And I know Alex, my coworker, who's a total tech nerd, he would be stoked to see the USB-C's. You do get actually both on the front. There's a USB-A up there and a USB-C and a Qi wireless charger, which is kind of cool. I'm really making videographer 
technical work to get shots of everything that I'm pointing out from random places in the car. But yeah, don't mind the back seat at all. And then finally, let's check out the trunk, power lift gate and 22.8 cubic feet of space behind the rear seats, which is, you know, that would be enough for me to hang out in if I wanted to. It's a decent sized rear trunk. So overall, really usable interior, not a ton of excess. I mean, the materials, especially in the back seat, are nothing too fancy, but it's a usable, economical interior. I really don't mind it at all. Um, now, let's go ahead and move on to this plug-in hybrid. This is gonna be your next step up in powertrains. So with this step up, you go from a 32 kilowatt electric motor to a 62 kilowatt electric motor, and you also get an 11.1 kilowatt hour battery in this car. So a much more substantial electrified component of the car. You also get more power, 180 horsepower versus 139, and you get 195 pound-feet torque. So same torque, more horsepower, um, and you can drive up to 33 miles on all electric. Now tomorrow, we're going to try to test out and see how far we can actually get on all electric in the real world, but Kia claims up to 33 miles. They also claim that on a level two charger, like the kind of charger you would install at home, you can charge this battery in under three hours, which is not bad. Most people's commutes are probably around about 30 miles or less. I know mine is. Um, so for a lot of drivers, you could do all of your driving on all electric, which would be really, really nice. Um, also about 53 miles per gallon on the hybrid model, unless you spec it out with optional 18 inch wheels, in which case that rating drops down to 49. Uh, and then 108 MPGE on this plug-in hybrid model. So already really good efficiency on the base and just a whole lot more if you opt for the plug-in. And then finally, we have to talk about the Crown powertrain, which is the full electric model. 201 horsepower from its electric motor and a 64.8 kilowatt hour battery. And you can fast charge this car on a level three charger uh, Kia says 10 to 80% in under 45 minutes. Um, it can only fast charge up to 85 kilowatts, so it's not a super, super fast charging car. I mean, EV6 does what? I think 350, so it, that's a really impressively fast charging car. Um, but this is a pretty small battery, so charging it up um, on a fast charger, even though it's not the fastest charging thing in terms of how much power it can take in, not that big of a deal because yeah it's not that big of a battery um, and again 201 horsepower so you're going to get the most power output out of this full electric model um, also let's talk a little bit about styling because i think that that's one of the things that makes this car really stand out because again there's a lot of vehicles in this segment more and more coming out and so you kind of have to do something a little dramatic to separate yourself from the rest and i would say that this has definitely done that i think the biggest thing that you notice when you walk up to it are all of these elements of contrast especially along the side of the body you have a lot of black body work along the bottom and then this right here the aero blade so this is actually a functional intake right here. Helps with the aerodynamics of the car, apparently. I mean, I haven't tried it in a wind tunnel or anything, but I believe them. But I also think it's cool that this panel is black. You're really not gonna mistake this Nero for any other car purely because of that. I think that just makes it unique. This might be uh, maybe a little bit of a controversial point on this car. It might not be everybody's thing. Um, I definitely don't mind it. Uh, and then you've got these boomerang style tail lights. Um, overall, pretty sharp car, I would say. Um, I think Kia has been doing honestly a really good job with their design. I like the EV6 a lot. Um, and I like this as well because it's nice to have a smaller alternative. One thing that I do wish that there was, was I wish you had the option for an all wheel drive variant. There isn't one. Every one of these powertrains is front wheel drive which is not the end of the world. You could put snow tires on a front wheel drive car and get around fine in most places. Um, being that we're based in Colorado, I would always prefer to have the option of all wheel drive. Of course, you could get the EV6 if you want to step up 
a level uh, to get all-wheel drive. That is doable. It would be kind of nice if they had it on this, but at least they have other cars that satisfy that need. So that's pretty much all there is to check out on this car. Now, uh, before we get to drive it, and let me tell you a little bit about the pricing. So, so far, Kia has only revealed the pricing for this, the base model hybrid, and it's going to start at $26,490 before destination, and then you could spec it all the way out to $32,490 if you get the top trim of it. Um, presumably, the other two are going to be more expensive, but um, yeah, you know, not bad in, in terms of pricing, um, especially considering how much you get. There are a lot of optional features on this car. Uh, you can get dual 10.25 inch screens on the car. They do come standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is nice to have. I mean, that's kind of become a standard at this point. You can also get a ton of other stuff like smart cruise control with stop and go. Um, yeah, really a lot of extra features that you can spec out on this car, but even the base of what you get is really nice. Also a lot of standard safety features. You get uh, blind spot, collision, avoidance, lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking. Um, so yeah, not a bad car if you don't go in and spec out tons and tons of options on it. Uh, but that's what the pricing is at the moment. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled for the full review on this car coming down the pipeline very, very soon. And let me know what you think in the comments below.